In today's tutorial, let's work on the mini pumpkin together and that's coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna feature one of the smaller pumpkins of this pattern. So there's three different sizes. The mini pumpkins, there's only a difference of a half inch to each other. So I'm only gonna film mini pumpkin number one. We already have the large pumpkin in tutorial format. Today's pattern is really easy. These are much smaller than the bigger ones obviously and they'll go a lot quicker. So if you're looking for miniature ideas for table toppers, decor for Halloween, Thanksgiving, fall, the celebration of harvest this is for you. So let's review today's pattern. I'm using a size G four millimeter crochet hook today. Instead of using the Lily Sugar and Cream I'm using Bernat Super Value. This is called Pumpkin. That's what the color is. You know go figure. And what we have today is that we've already done the video for the big pumpkin and I'm gonna move to the small pumpkin. So that's on page number two. Now the difference between mini pumpkin number one and mini pumpkin number two is the amount of revolutions after you get beyond the fifth uh, round here. So in mini pumpkin number one it says to repeat the last round four more times but in mini pumpkin number two when you get there it says to repeat the last round six times. So mini pumpkin number two is slightly bigger but only about a half an inch bigger. So it's not that much bigger. So I'm only gonna film uh, the mini pumpkin number one for YouTube at this time and uh, because it's so close to each other I think that if you really do want this one you can just substitute that information and just change it out in order to suit you. Now when you're going to work on this for example you say you wanna do mini pumpkin number two it says work from the two asterisks to the two asterisks as given in mini pumpkin number one. So in the instructions the double asterisks are up here the two and down here. So when it says to work from the double asterisks to the double asterisks you're repeating all of this instruction except for that the repeat the last four rounds it's outside of the asterisks therefore this is new information. So basically it's telling you repeat the double asterisks to the double asterisks and then once you get that it says repeat the last round six more times which would be a substitute for that and then essentially you just have to just follow the rest of it in order to bring it to a close. You can also create a stem with this and a curly cue just for tutorial reasons. I will do both here on camera for the smaller versions just in case you do wanna switch off with that idea. Let's begin with the slip knot. And remember there's slower tutorials available online. Uh, this is considered, I would consider this an intermediate project. Uh, easy, experienced beginner but definitely intermediate I guess. So we're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four and insert your hook into the beginning chain yarn over and pull through and you'll have a center ring which would be the very center of the bottom of your pumpkin. So we're going to begin round number one. So with this straggler the loose end just wrap it around the circle like it's part of the circle and just crochet right over top of it and it'll get lost. So this time we're going to chain two and remember what I've already just said is that the chaining two that we start off with never counts as a half double crochet. So for example we need to have eight half double crochets around this entire ring. So normally this would count as one so therefore you'll half double crochet seven more times but because it doesn't count it's more of a filler I guess you can say. So we're going to put in eight half double crochets um, all the way around the ring. So just go into the center of the ring, pull through and this is half double crochet so pull through all three loops. So that was one and two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And once you have your eight done you're just going to slip stitch to the first half double crochet. So not to the chain two but right into the first half double crochet. So that, that chaining of two that we start out with is more of a filler just to get you up to the right height. And so then that concludes round number one. So round number two we're gonna chain up two. Remember it does not count as any of the stitches and we're going to put in two half double crochets into each of the stitches going all the way around. So then this will take you from eight half double crochets all around up into 16. So just in every stitch put in two half double crochets and continue to do that all the way around. 
when you get all the way back around just slip stitch to the first half double crochet. So skip right over that chain two and just go right for the first half double crochet and there it concludes round number two. Let's begin round number three. So we're gonna chain up two and it doesn't count as anything within this particular pattern. So it says to yarn over and draw up through loop three times in the next half double crochet yarn over and draw through all loops on the hook. So we're creating a puff stitch at this point. So we're gonna yarn over going into the first half double crochet pulling it through, yarn over going into the same one pull through, yarn over pull into the same one and pull through. All of that is now going to be your puff stitch. So you yarn over and pull through everything. So when you first try the stitch you're probably gonna catch on some stuff. It takes a little bit of practice getting used to. Once you pull through you yarn over and lock it with the, it's a, like a chain and we lock that stitch into position. Now the difference between the large pumpkin and this one is that the next one called for us to do half double crochet in the next half double crochet but because this is a smaller one it says to put in one single crochet this time instead of a half double. So that's the difference if you're following both of these tutorials. So the next one is now another puff stitch. So we wrap going into the stitch pull it through, wrap into the stitch pull through, wrap into the stitch pull through and then yarn over and pull through everything lock it with a chain and then single crochet into the next one and you continue that same rhythm going all the way around. Let me review one more time. So wrap in through pull through, wrap and through, pull through, wrap and through, pull through. So now you have, the, it's been done three times so wrap and pull through everything and then yarn over and pull through everything just like that and then single crochet into the next. So continue that same pattern and going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I have two stitches left. I'm doing a puff stitch right now and I'm gonna be left with the one extra one, extra stitch from this point and that's my final single crochet in there. So if your puff stitch is on your very final stitch you know that it's some, something is wrong. There should be a total of eight puff stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So once you do that then you just slip stitch to the top of the next puff stitch that you have at the beginning and then that concludes that round just like that. Let's begin round number four. So we're gonna chain up two, doesn't count as anything and we're gonna just go into the next puff stitch and we're gonna put two puff stitches into this one. So just wrap and going into the top. So right where you did that chaining of one, that's the very top of the puff stitch. So don't come one over, just come right into the top of that one and do your puff stitch as normal. So wrap and through, wrap and through. I'm a little tight this morning as I'm doing my tutorial and that last one I missed. You wanna be a little bit fussy with these uh, particular stitches of course. Okay, now that you have all that done, wrap and pull through everything, lock it with a chain one and then puff stitch one more time into that same stitch so it's gonna get a little bit tight in there. Okay, I missed that again. Now technically I would turn off my camera and, and uh, say this is an outtake but I prefer that you see me screwing up because it just means that we're all human, right? Okay, lock it with a chain one and then the next single crochet will be a single crochet. So your repeat pattern for this entire round is that every puff stitch is gonna have two puff stitches on top of it and then the single crochet will be a single crochet. Please do that for round number four. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm finishing up with my two um, puff stitches in the one and don't forget to do that one last single crochet in that round and then just join it with the slip stitch to the top of the first puff. So that concludes off round number four. So now we're finished growing our particular bumpkin and now for round number five plus four more times after that we're going to do the same thing and let's begin that. Let's begin round number five and we're going to repeat this round four more times after this. So let's just start. We're going to chain two, doesn't count as anything. Each one of the puff stitches is gonna have its own puff stitch. Okay, this is when we stop really growing the pumpkin for uh, increasing. So it's puff stitch, lock it with a chain one and then the next puff, st puff stitch is gonna get its own. So it's almost like a hat in some way that it's gonna take a few rounds before it really comes around to look like a pumpkin. 
Okay, lock it with a chain one and then single crochet in the single crochet. Okay, let's repeat one more time. So there's two puffs. Each one of the puffs will have its own puff on top. So I want you to do this round just like this plus do it four more times as part of the pattern and then when we come back then we'll start doing the decreasing of this pumpkin and make sure you do have your stuffing available to you so that we can work on it and get it done for today. So once you get those two done single crochet in the next single crochet and keep on going. So please do this for a total of this round plus four more. So I'm just finishing up round number five and I'm just joining it to the top of the beginning puff. Okay, so we have to repeat this four more times and I'm just recapping. So just make sure you, this last time we were doing uh, the puffs were together. This time they're gonna be separated. So when you start this one, this will be round number six. It's just one puff into each one of the puffs and then single crochet into the single crochet. So make sure you maintain that going all the way around. And this will, and make sure that you are doing uh, four more rounds of this. So this is round five. So you want six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'm just finishing up my final round of repeating the fifth round four more times. And I have realized something that I wanna share with you and I'm almost, I don't wanna pull apart my big pumpkin that I realized. See how it's kind of flat and I can see the puff stitches. It looks great and so what I did on the big one is that I kind of pushed it down and made my stem. What I didn't realize is that on the other side of this because I'm crocheting this way there's a lot of fabulous texture to it and I think that my pumpkin of the original one I did is inside out. So what I'm gonna do because if you pull it down like this you can get some beautiful texture and I think that I've crocheted the other one inside out. <laughs> so what I need to do is that when you do puff stitches the other side of the puff stitches always stick out more and so I'm, I'm just gonna turn it so I've been crocheting like this okay and I'm gonna turn it now and crochet this way. Okay, it's the same way. It's just all I'm just doing is turning it. So I always crochet with this on, in front of me so that you can see it. But in this case because I want the puff stitches on the other side I now have to crochet it so that I'm looking beyond this one and onto this one. Does that make sense? Okay, so and I'm gonna continue to crochet in the circle like this. So let's move on to the next round. This pumpkin is gonna quickly finish so let's begin to do the next round. So we're gonna chain up two and it says to do a puff stitch between the next two puffs. So we have two puffs and we're going to crochet in between the, the, the two. So you, last a few stitches we've been going right up over top of uh, each one of them but now we're gonna go into the gap between them. So we just go right into the gap. It's just really easy and we do a puff like this. Okay, chain one to lock it and then we single crochet into the next single crochet. Okay, so let's review. So you got two puffs in a row which is before, which is between the single crochets just like this. We're going to puff right into the middle of the two. It's just to a gapping space. So please do that same thing going all the way around and then once you get that done then you single crochet to the next and then puff between the next two and then single crochet and keep that going. I'm coming up all the way around. Here's the last puff between the two puffs. Don't forget you need to single crochet into the single crochet and then just join it to the top of the next puff to finish that round just like so. We're gonna do another round of this and then we're gonna put stuffing inside. So let's do another round. We're going to chain two at this point and remember it doesn't count as anything and this time what we need to do is that we're gonna put one single crochet into the puff and then one single crochet into the next stitch. So the next puff, don't forget to get right on top of that puff. Don't put into any other spaces that you see. Right on top of that puff for a single crochet and then single crochet into the next single crochet. Continue to do that all the way around. I'm coming up all the way back around. I've got a single crochet over the last puff. Don't forget to single crochet in that last single crochet and then just join it to the beginning single crochet. <laughs> so let's grab our stuffing and you just basically grab your stuffing and just ram this in the inside. Remember don't overstuff it. You're not making an orange. You're making a pumpkin so you are gonna want it to shape it so it keeps its shape. I notice the top kind of comes down a little bit and I'm gonna wanna do some stem work and etc. there. So grab, grab your stuffing and let's stuff it and if you overstuff it you can always reach in through the puffs to pull more out but if you don't uh, but if you don't um, stuff it enough then it's gonna be deflated. 
So I now have my pumpkin stuffed and it always feels like it's overstuffed but then last time I did that it wasn't stuffed enough. So I've got more in there than I would normally want to put in. I'd rather play it safe than sorry. So let's uh, continue. We're going to chain one this time and we're going to do one single crochet in each of the next two. So just one single crochet in the next two and then the next two are going to be uh, a single crochet together. So single crochet two together. So just insert into the next stitch, pull through and insert into the next stitch, pull through and now you have three loops on your hook, pull through all three and that makes those two stitches into one. So let's continue the repeat pattern. So the next two are going to be one single crochet each and then the next two are gonna be together. So go in, pull through and going in, pull through. So that was the next one and pull through all that. So continue that same pattern and going all the way around. So I'm just finishing up this. You should end up with the last two stitches as your two together before joining it with the slip stitch. So that's two together and just join it to the t beginning single crochet that you started with. Let's move on to the next round. Let's move on to the next round. We're going to do chain one and it says to do one single crochet into the next single crochet and then the next two are together. So the next two stitches. So one pull through going into the next one pull through and then pull through all three loops. Continue that same pattern and going all the way around. So one single crochet and the next two are together. So this is decreasing even more stitches to make the bottom of your pumpkin flat. So continue that until you get back to the start. The next round is our final round, chain one and then single crochet two together all the way around. So the next two are together, pull through and next two together and keep doing that all the way around. There's not very many stitches left anyway. And then what I want you to do, I'll come back and we'll leave an extra long string and then I'll show you how to close it officially. So I've gone all the way around. I want to leave a little bit of an extra string here and I still left in my hook and I'm just gonna pull this yarn right up like this. There's still gonna be a slight space so just using your darning needle just insert your yarn into the eye of the needle okay pulling everything through the eye and just quite simply just go across the the whole um, the hole and just kind of close it off. go across back and forth and then when I don't need to do a lot of it here so in order to close this off perfectly you can just go into the direction the same direction three times. So let's see how I'm going back and forth but I choose different fibers to go into so that this loose end will never be shown just like that and I trim. So let's move on. We still have um, a curly Q to make and we can shape this as, as what we need. You can also even just drag if you're not getting the right shape too you can just use a darning needle and some yarn and just kind of go through and just secure it to the bottom in order to get that perfect shape. So let me try that here live on camera see if that's gonna work for us. Um, I wanna kinda pull it down a little bit. Again this is about creativity and you can do what works for you. So I, I put in a slip knot on the one side I'm determining that this is the bottom because it has more flat stuff going on here. This has the ridges starting up closer to the top. So I'm gonna put this into the eye of the needle. So this is where ideas from patterns kind of take a different turn. So I'm gonna come up through the bottom but I'm not gonna pull the yarn all the way through and I'm gonna come up to the top, top middle. Okay and I'm gonna dive back down so don't pull that all the way through and I'm gonna dive back down through a different section coming to the bottom in a slightly different spot. So now I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna insert my needle into that slip knot like so and now I can just pull it until I get it to kinda just sink down a little bit and I'm getting extra fiber that looking there. Okay so I'm just gonna sink it a little bit and once I'm satisfied I just run it through the bottom fibers just back and forth three times. So one 
and I left an extra long string for the starting so I can just use my darning needle and I can hide that. So this is two and three. Come in back. A project can never stretch in two different directions at the same time like that. So that's why you can do that. So once you get rid of that just take your darning needle. This is your extra long string. Because nobody wants to see the tails of your work. So just in diving in just catch it and I bring it back out. And so now I can safely trim it to where it's popping out there. And therefore I have a pumpkin that looks like it's settling and of course it's full of fiber so I can manipulate it and now it's time to make some other stuff. So let's begin to make a curly cue. I'm just using some green and the curly cue is just a little vine that comes off the top. It's more whimsical than anything. Using the same size hook, a four millimeter size G crochet hook and we're going to chain 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So, oops, I just gotta stop at 16. So 16. Now if you want more than one curly cue, there's nothing stopping you to do that. If you want them to be longer, there's nothing stopping you. It's up to you. So to do a curly cue, all you have to do is go second chain from the hook just like so and put in three single crochets into that chain. And if I would just grab the yarn properly, maybe I could do it. <laughs> Let's go. So three single crochets into that first chain. Okay, it's the second chain from the hook. And then three cr uh, single crochets into the next. So you're just gonna go three single crochets into every chain going all the way. This is gonna cause it to rotate in a clockwise position just like you see. If you're left handed it might go into a, a counterclockwise. I really can't think about that too much. You see it's kind of manipulating and it will do like a corkscrew doing that because you're putting way too many stitches in to the chain therefore it will cause it to bend like that. So continue to do three single crochets all the way around. When you get done we're just gonna leave an extra long tail so we can sew it to the base of the stem, of the stem but we still have to make that next two. I'm on my very last chain. I'm putting in my three single crochets. So this goes really quickly to be quite honest with you. Once you have your three in there, leave an extra long string so that you can use that to sew into the stem of your pumpkin. So because my uh, stem is not quite done yet, I'm just gonna hold off on that for a bit. Um, this extra string that we had starting off with here, we're just gonna use a darning needle and just kinda hide it into the fibers. You can use your crochet hook too to weave it but the darning needle does a much better job and it's probably faster too. So you just ram it through some of the fibers coming through and then you can just trim it because you know it's through the fibers. Okay, so there for there's the sewing string in order to sew it to the stem. So let's start to make the stem together and we're just gonna create a slip knot. And the stem is pretty simple. So we're gonna chain two, one and two and it says to put nine single crochets second chain from the hook which is the beginning chain going in there and do nine single crochets. So just one. And this is gonna cause it to make a big circle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. And then it says to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. So we come into the first one and slip stitch just like this. So let's move along to the next round. It says working in the back loops only, one single crochet into each. So we just continue and go, so there's two strands. So if you're new to crochet, there's always two strings. Okay, uh, when, and when you go into both it's one stitch but if you go into the one that's on the other side, the farthest away from you, one string only, that's called a back loop. So just coming in and just go into the back loop only for one single crochet. And this is gonna cause a ridge to show up in your stem. So just into the back loop only, it's one strand. And we're gonna do that all the way around. It's kind of a trick for making projects kind of bend 
and have shaping is using the back loops. Also see that a lot in hats for stretching and etc. Okay, so coming all the way back around just like this. Okay, let's move along to the next round. Let's begin the fourth round. I think there's a typo on the pattern. It jumps from second round to fourth round without any instruction. So I'm assuming it should, this should be the third round even though it says fourth. So let's chain up one and we're gonna go into both the loops now in, in each stitch going all the way around. After you get this round done it says to repeat this round uh, five more times and so basically um, you're just growing your stem up. Okay and what I would do is turn it so that it flips it on the inside. So the inside is out like this and continue to go around at that time. So continue that and I will meet you back up on the next round that it says where we'll do the stem area where it attaches to the top of the pumpkin. We are now ready for the final part of this stem which concludes the almost the tutorial work for this before sewing this to the top of the pumpkin. So we're going to go in and it says chain one and it says half double crochet, one double crochet and half double crochet in the next single crochet. So we're gonna do a half double crochet, a full double crochet and a half double crochet into the next one like this. And then when you read the instruction it says one single cro uh, crochet in each of the next two. So the next two are gonna be one single crochet. And this will make sense why you're doing this. So the next one is going to be a half double crochet followed by a full double crochet and a half double crochet. Okay and single crochet in the next two. Continue that same patterning going all the way around and this is creating a really interesting look to the top of it. So it's almost like gonna be a square look when you're done. And now I'm finishing this round with two single crochets and then I'm gonna slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet that we started with or the beginning half double. So this is kind of what it looks like from the top point of view. It's like a mini hat just etc etc. So all this is and I'm gonna leave an extra long string. So let me trim that now. I'm gonna need my stuffing. This string that's popping out is just extra. It's, it's just uh, from the starting. So all I'm just gonna do is I'm just going to pull this string out and I'm going to use that string to sew on and I'm going to put on the, the curly cue afterward but you just look down from the top and just place this in and I want to do it so it kind of sinks down a little bit to give the actual pumpkin look like so. And so I just gotta stuff that a little bit, add my curly cue in and when I come back I'll have that all done just to show you. So actually I better show you how to do that because I know somebody's gonna email me on that. So coming in I'm just gonna insert this long string. Let me get some stuffing up from the bottom of the desk. Not too much, just enough to keep it from collapsing. This is probably too much. Okay, and I can always save that for a project in the future. So just using your fingers just kinda ram it in. And stuffing you can get at any craft store in any place that sells crafts for the most part. So I wanna look down and I wanna come in and just kinda place it down on the center and just using my string just coming in going into the orange and then back up. And then through the green or uh, brown again. So I'm so I'm gonna jump to the next stitch. If I'm gonna do a large jump, do it underside, don't do it overside. Meaning that when I come back up, um, I can skip over some of the um, stitches here. But when I come up, I wanna come up on one and then just jump down in the next stitch just to make it look like it's hidden. So and again if this is not shaping properly you can just use your um, skills with your darning needle in order to kind of force it down. So when I come back I'll have all this done just to show you my final look. 
So here's my mini pumpkin and I did sink down the one a little bit and if you look really carefully which I can't even see myself is that I went down with the, the brown a little bit just to make it squat a little bit more and then of course I added my curly Q and this is what a mini pumpkin looks like. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.